I was out in my garden playing around, you know, just spending time and getting used to hanging out with my plants, watching them, observing them, interacting with them. And I thought, let's do something fun. I have these moringa trees right here. You can see all the beautiful leaves and flowers. These are the trees that I have observed a lot of butterflies on. They like these flowers right here. You can see all those beautiful, oh, there's a bee right there. Nice capture. It seems that there's a lot of pollinators that really like the moringa plant. I happen to have some moringa seeds, so let's plant them and just see what happens. Obviously, you're not gonna find what happens in this episode, but it'll give us something to look forward to. I'm gonna go in the greenhouse and get some fabric pots. I'm not taking you in with me because I already got in trouble once for showing you guys the inside of my messy greenhouse. Can't look in, but uh, I wanted to say that with a messy greenhouse that has a lot of seeds and things stored in it, also come rats. Our cats haven't been able to keep up very well with some of the rats. In fact, we've lost a few cats lately, but let me show you. I got a friend in the greenhouse. Remember that one I found in the garden? It's probably the same one. He's eating so many rats and growing so big, he's shedding all kinds of skin. That's a pretty nice snake. All right, I got the fabric pots. We're gonna get some, oh, I need to get the moringa seeds. Hold on, don't look, don't look. Okay, I got them. These right here are moringa seeds. These are the pods that grew on the moringa tree. I haven't opened any of them yet to see what the seeds look like, so you're gonna get to do that with me. There, now you can see me. These are basically like little throwaway fabric pots. They're, they're about the size of a lunch bag, like a brown paper lunch bag. They're real thin, so they're, they're pretty much designed for one-time use, I think. Then I also have my Moringa seeds. There, all set. First of all, with these bags, you don't have to use the bags. You could just use regular pots, but I have the bags, and I, I like the advantage of the fabric pots because the roots grow out to the edges, and they don't start swirling around. They, the, the little roots poke out of the, the fabric, and then the air and the light prunes them off, and it sends a lot of baby roots off the sides, and it just makes for a more vigorous plant. So I'm just folding them down halfway, taking some potting soil that I have here in a bucket. See that? Now I have a pot. It's got a couple, you know, an inch and a half, two inches or so of space at the top. It probably has two to three inches of soil in the bottom. But that's gonna be enough to grow a seed. I'm gonna put a seed right there in the middle. All right, let's see what these Moringa seeds look like. All right, cracking it open. Oh, there's more than I thought. All right, so I heard that they had these little wings on them, which is kind of cool. So you got this kind of a three-way paper wing on this seed. Wow, look at that. There's four right there. There's four more. Uh, getting harder to open as we get down to the small end. There's a seed, but it's really small. It's probably not a very good seed. Yeah, the seeds are getting much smaller as we're getting down to the end of the pods. Or actually, there's a few big ones in the bottom. Must have just been a skinny spot in the pod. There's three more decent ones in the bottom of this. Picking them up off the ground right now, they fell out. So that's an empty pod. I'm not gonna take all of the seeds out of all of the pods because I think I'm gonna try to plant some in the spring as well as now in the fall or late, late fall. Uh, getting to the uh, winter time. So here's a handful of seeds. Now I know you can't see me now, but at least you can see down into my fabric pot. I'm just gonna slightly compact the soil, just enough so it's not falling apart. As with a lot of seeds, uh, sort of the general rule is that you're gonna plant the seed as deep as it is tall or a little more. The recommendation for the Moringa is three quarters of an inch to an inch deep which is pretty close if you include the paper, about as deep as that, uh, that seed is tall right there. When I was digging through some tools that I had found in a box, I think we got them at a yard sale or something, I found this tool right here. Now, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's a dibbler or a dibble or a dimple or something starting with a D, I think. But it's for planting things. You, you use this. You okay? 
they're wrangling chickens over there. So you use this to push a hole into your soil. A lot of them I've seen online uh, actually have markings to tell you how deep it is. I may be wrong, this might be something else, but I'm pretty sure that's what this tool is. Check that out. You see that nice hole right there? You just push it in. That makes a nice hole right in the middle. And I can drop this seed right down in the middle of that, kind of push it in place with my finger. And take some of this soil, the loose soil, and just cover it up. Now wouldn't it be funny if that is not what this tool actually is? Like maybe it's uh, something that you use in the kitchen for making pies or something or, or hang it from a string and use it for finding level or plum like, it, like they do on this old house. But I'm pretty sure it's for planting things. That is one Moringa seed planted. I'm going to use as many seeds and as many bags as I have and I'm just going to line these up. I have three additional pods that I'm going to try to keep safe from the rats. And we're going to do this again in the spring to see if they grow better planted in the fall or the spring. This is my fall winter experiment for Moringa seeds. I decided to go ahead and put all of those little bags. Oh, I'm caught on a Moringa bean. How ironic. I decided to place all of those pots right here on the front side of this bed where I have my tomatoes growing. I did plant some spinach seeds up here earlier in the year but nothing grew. It's a good place to put them to help me remember to water them, keep them watered. The Moringa seeds need to stay well watered until they sprout and even until they get to be a foot to a foot and a half tall. This space right here front and center in the garden is going to be a really nice place for me to actually remember to keep water on them. So now we wait. We wait to see if the Moringa seeds sprout and if they grow when they're planted in the fall. But while we're waiting, Aren't you curious to see if any of my sweet potatoes that I planted in fabric pots are doing any good? I am. I have a couple of sweet potato plants that were attacked by insects and I'm going to go ahead and get them harvested. These are in the three gallon fabric pots. This was one of my experiments. This is one of my experiments that didn't go too well. That's all I got. Let's see if the other pot is any better. I'm still gonna eat it. It's just not gonna fill me up. This vine's not quite as bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the pot. It's really cool. You can see all the roots that grow down into the bottom of the pot. Well, there's a few more. The goats will enjoy the vines and I'll enjoy a small harvest of sweet potatoes. All right, thank you so much for joining me in this episode in the garden. It's been a lot of fun to experiment and play in the dirt with you guys. If you have any suggestions on the Moringa seeds, if you know how they grow, you're used to growing them, uh, let me know how you do it. Let me know what your climate is to, so I can compare Texas to wherever you are. And uh, we'll just compare notes and see if we can get some Moringa trees to grow. Thanks again. I'll talk to you soon.